Hello and welcome to Release Date Rewind. My name is Mark J. Parker and I am a film lover, filmmaker, film celebrator. And normally this is an audio podcast wherever you get your podcasts on your favorite apps. But thanks to Portland Media Center, you are about to watch the video component of this show where I celebrate movie anniversaries with my friends. Each month, I usually talk about two different movies that I love with different friends. And we talk about the making of the movies, trivia, any fun memories associated with them. So I hope you enjoy because now it's time to rewind. I'm so excited to have a friend that hasn't been on the podcast in almost a year. He was last on for Poltergeist uh, last June. Oh, ooh, and you can hear the, the honking horns of New Jersey, New York in his background. Everybody, please welcome David Gonzalez back to Release Date Rewind. Hi, Dave. Hey, thank you for having me. I'm very excited to talk about this. I'm lovely, so glad. Movie. I am so glad you reached out. I think I had shared like an article on my stories on Instagram and Dave and I think I even said like, does anyone want to talk about this with me? Because I earlier today was the first time I rewatched it, Dave, in years, I think decades, maybe at least 20 years. Maybe That was that was me. Uh, till last week, because okay. I'm sure you are aware, and we, you, you mentioned it in, in our chat, this is impossible to find. Yeah, right? They totally uh, wanted to hide this because the new one has been so popular, right? Which we can talk about that. Did you see the new Super yes, Mario? Yes, yes. Yeah? Um, what did you think? I'm very... Film Twitter is a very interesting world to live in. It feels like Super Mario World, like where you're living in the Mushroom Kingdom. Uh, <laughs> because... Every now and then, Film Twitter f picks a movie to either bash or love. For okay. some reason, it happened to be Super Mario Brothers. Mm. And for me, I personally enjoyed it quite a bit. I think it captures what the game captured. I, I feel mm. we're going to talk in detail about this 93 version in here. And mm -hmm. we can talk about the fact that it actually has kind of an, a through line of a story. Mm -hmm. The animated film is pretty much... You go from point A, you go from point B, you rescue said person, you finish the story. And people, a lot of people were complaining about the fact that it has no story. And I'm like, have you played the game? <laughs> I'm like, you, every single game pretty much is Mario or Luigi rescuing the princess. And you, you know, that's it. You yeah. take down Koopa. Essentially the same thing. You're not right. rescuing the princess in this animated version. You're rescuing Luigi. That's the only turnaround. Oh, interesting. Okay. And I pretty like the dynamic of Mario and, and Peach working together. That's cool. But in terms of what it's accomplishing, it accomplishes what the game does. So it's, okay. it's, it very much, it's, it's funny because I'm not the type, I could be argumentative, but that's not, this is not a, an argumentative movie to get, you know, to really dive into and get angry over it's just i sit back in the weeds and just laugh at people getting angry over super mario brothers i'm glad it's made so much money because oh i'm very God. interested to see the world expand on that yeah i, I mean i assume we're absolutely getting at least one sequel probably a few right i mean it made millions it's opening weekend it kind of surprised me because i had heard you know i heard the whole chris pratt drama that he was <laughs> playing Mario and everyone's like, why him? Which I agree. I'm like, why him? But what the heck? That made so much money. It's opening weekend. I forgot it was even out. I, I haven't seen it, obviously, but I will. I'm I'm super curious to check it Over out. Over a billion dollars already. Oh my God, Dave, that is wild. Especially, I mean, wow. You know, when you think about it, when was the, I guess Top Gun Maverick made a ton of money last year. But so like we, last year we had, I believe... Two billion dollar movies oh, yeah, Avatar. with uh, Avatar and then Top Gun Maverick, and yeah. then before that we had Spider Man, oh, uh, yep. No No Way Home, and then mm -hmm. before that we didn't have anything until pre COVID, oh. where we yeah. had I think twenty nineteen set the record. I think it yeah. had six, wow, five or That's six because wild. it had Endgame, The Lion King, Joker. Oh wow, I forgot about The Lion King. Uh, yeah, the, Joker. Um, I think Toy. Story four? Oh, maybe. maybe. Yeah, probably. I know there was. I know it broke a record. I can't remember yeah. the other two off the off the, off the top right. of my head, but I know that it was a huge deal. Uh, so this is huge. I mean, I think it's the it's on it's pacing itself to be in the top five highest grossing animated films of all time. Wow. 
pretty that's amazing pretty amazing and as someone that loves the oscars the way i do and follows yeah. the politics of the oscars yes it has a 59 percent on our on rt it doesn't matter yeah. this movie i think if it's a weak year in animation because right now i feel like it's top heavy with spider-man mm-hmm. and um mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and there's a uh the makers of wallace and gromit are releasing a movie plus elemental so i think those oh. three feel like they're even though we're in in may feel sh- like a sure thing i could easily see mario as like a five spot just getting yeah. in there with the box office because they love oh, to totally. bring in those popular movies especially yeah. since the low rating so absolutely yeah especially yeah. for animation i feel like they want some of the bigger ones but the animation does look beautiful like the, the commercials and trailers i've seen for the film i mean it looks so good so at least yeah. visually i can so, say even those that haven't liked it at least they've praised that it's one of the most beautiful looking animated movies yeah they've ever i've ever seen it's gorgeous wow interesting well and then now we're going back 30 years ago to yes. a less gorgeous <laughs> looking movie but before we do that yes. i want everyone to know all the cool stuff you're doing dave so okay you are the co-founder or i should say the founder right of the cinematic yes. reel you're right. Your yeah, the, news and review it, site. How's that going? Tell me It's everything. been so long since I've been on that I've had a complete name change and rebrand. Yeah, the last time uh-huh. I was on, it was Retalk, Real Talk. And then yeah. I, uh, in January, I did a little bit of a rebrand, changed the color scheme. Now I'm the, we're yeah. the cinematic reel. Uh, Looks it's been good. going great. It's been going great. Uh, been very, very busy. Uh, covered Sundance earlier in January. I've been covering all these. That's great. Are, 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 have been dropping. Um, I, and did you go to Sundance or were you no, doing it virtually? No. Yeah. Did it virtually. Ironically, I got an email today that with the Sundance dates and kind mm. of encouraging me. They're like, hey, you know, we're pretty much, you, we can, we'd like you to come. And I'm like, eh, nice. it's expensive. <laughs> I'm about to start covering Tribeca in two weeks. Okay. Yeah. And that's kind of one of my favorite film festivals. But no, yeah, right. outside of that, it's, uh, it's been really fun. My, you can definitely find my work on a cinematic reel.com yeah. and also on Ryan Tomatoes. I have all my reviews posted there. That's so uh, amazing. On my Ryan Tomatoes profile. So love that. We yeah. have a film critic in our midst, everyone. <laughs> and then you have your podcast. You have Real Talk still, yes. which you've been doing that now. How many years? So Real, Real Chronicles Talk. has Real Chronicles has or been Real Chronicles. ongoing since 2017. 2017. Okay, and yeah. And then I have Chop Talk, which I started last year because yeah. you know I adore horror as a whole. But it's specifically oh, yeah. 1980s horror. I yes. think 1980s horror is probably, in my personal opinion, the best in terms of entertainment wise, the best decade of horror. Yeah. Because of they were just shooting, throwing shit on the wall and seeing what stuck. And right. a lot of it just turns out to be some really fun, entertaining yeah. horror. Very bold, just like making our nightmares come to life. And maybe it didn't work, maybe it did, right? And the the lots of great practical effects. And yeah, it makes me actually, the more I talk about horror and like with you and different people, like the more I talk to fellow horror fans, I realize I need to make my shorts a little bloodier and gorier. I, I think gore is like really popular again, you know? Well, you do it right. When someone does it right, oh, yeah. I just think it's so effective. We Before we move on to Mario, we got to talk about you're a dad because you weren't a dad last year when no, you were on the show. Not. That's another, you're a, just a tiny change. And how perfect because this episode's about to come out next week. So it'll be by the time Mother's Day rolls around, this will, you know, be out or it will be right after. So happy Mother's Day to Jenny, your wife, yes. and happy almost Father's Day to you. Thank Tell you, me, you. how was dad life? Um, Anything they tell you, just throw it out the window. Yeah. it's It's been pretty amazing. It's um, She was born on Christmas Day. Wow. So true blessing. Um, it took a lot to get here. Yeah. And as you can see behind me, because we're on camera right now, she yeah. pretty much lives on lives on our wall. I love it. And you um, post such awesome pictures with you and her. Har- Harley Quinn. What a yes, name. Yes, her name is Harley Quinn. I'm not surprised um, with you. <laughs> no, yeah, she... It's it's a lot of work, and I you mentioned Mother's Days this week. Like yeah. Jenny is a superstar, like absolutely. Like I've I've always had much respect for mothers even before because right. I have my own mother who's a single mom. So like I have right. respect for all the all, all the moms out there. But just seeing it, like seeing her give birth, and just seeing all the work that she's putting in, it's you know I do my best, but you know nothing compares to the work that she does. So wow, as a dad, it's it's pretty amazing just seeing her grow. That's like it's, amazing. It's, she, I love feeding her. It's, it just, it's the things that I didn't think that I would just love 
are the smallest moments. Like I just love feeding her. Like I was talking to you before we jumped on the fact that like yeah. I'm, I was able to feed her before her, her last feeding of the day because she was, you know, she's going to go upstairs and take a bath now, but it's just seeing that. And she smiles so much. She has the most precious Aww. smile and she has teeth growing in now. She already has wow. two teeth. And it, it, she's only what she so Christmas day. Okay. So she's not she's even, five five months. Months she's okay, not even five yeah. months old. Okay. Yeah. Wow. She's, she's pretty long. She's almost, uh, she's over two feet already wow okay yeah good segue to this movie i feel like it's important for her to see some of these things especially this movie I th- oh i would love when you do please like tell me what she thinks because i was actually thinking because i i am part of the big brothers big sisters program and mm-hmm. re-watching this i was like man i wonder what my little aiden would think of this because kids today are like he is so critical my god he is so critical so i feel like he'd be like this actually like came out in theaters and i i mean as a kid Let's see, 1993, I think I was I was six when this came out. So I don't think I saw it in theaters, but I know we uh, rented it. I watched it repeatedly. I was obsessed with this movie, Dave. But it's just funny because I think kids now would be like, what the hell? <laughs> Where are we? I got a feeling we're not in Brooklyn no more. Luigi! You better not hurt I, I actually saw this in did you see it in theaters wow who'd you go with do you remember my mom took me because oh. i grew up and i uh to this day i have an nes and snes at home okay because i love playing the same way i love old movies i love playing retro games yeah so i'm a big when i'm growing up i was I love big that. into nintendo and super nintendo i was like obsessed oh. with mario I, like, right behind me i have my nintendo and super nintendo but i need to set them up i need to figure out how to like set it up without an old school tv so you gotta like you the best way to do it oh yeah i could definitely let you know that but like i was big into i had a sega i had a nintendo i had a mm. snes but i was always drawn to like the mario game that i just mm-hmm. found like they were the most fun like super mario world for snes is probably mm-hmm. up there that and the last of us are probably my two favorite games i've ever played oh, yeah that's cool um so i was like when th- when i saw i saw it in a was nintendo power that they were oh okay the old magazine yeah they were talking about the movie i pretty much begged my mother to take me wow. because i was obs- that's like, awesome that's- then i saw the movie <laughs> and even as a even as a little kid i was like what is going on here <laughs> wow so you knew see i didn't even as a kid i was like oh i was into it dave i forgot I loved the song that that they they finished this movie very abruptly. It's just like she comes in and then we're cutting to black and that song starts almost almost unreal. I think is the the song from Roxette. I think yes. Oh my god, I forgot how much I loved that song as a kid. I would sing that on the credits and then rewind and watch it all over again. So I was not as savvy as you. I did not do realize you, that this movie do was you a mess. No, no, no. I so here's the thing. I didn't think it was a mess. I wouldn't know. Yeah. I just thought even like. Obviously, you don't remember a lot of memories as a kid because that's right. a long time ago. But there are a few things that even as a kid, I still remember now. Yeah. I, and I actually wrote them down in my notes. All oh, right, yeah. So why is there a narration to the dinosaur age in the beginning mm-hmm. of the movie? I just even as a kid, I'm like, are we in the right theater? Right. Um, and it's not even there. You would think it would be Mario or Luigi or both of them. But it's like some random, random voice, right? Random yeah. Guy, yeah. 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 Um, and then the other two things, I know, uh, a couple of things I noticed of like, why is Koopa in a military suit? Right. Um, yeah. Why is he a germaphobe? Yeah. I And, you know, it's funny because I rewatching it, I remembered things like like it was yesterday. Like, oh, yeah, he gets sprayed on his hands. and But that never really comes into play later, the whole germaphobe thing. It doesn't. Thing. It doesn't and lead I, anywhere. And I think my biggest, I guess, disappointment as a kid was Yoshi because I, I really liked the character of Yoshi in the game. Right. Mm-hmm. And I, I didn't think this as a kid, as a seven year old, but I thought thinking rewatching now, I'm like, it feels like Spielberg had leftover props from Jurassic World, and he's yes. like, here you go, here. Yes, here, it's en- funny. It looks this. nothing like Yoshi, the Yoshi we know from the games, but it does look cool, and I it do does. love like the little friendship between Daisy and Yoshi. But I thought the same thing because Jurassic Park came out just a few weeks after this. So kind of a crazy time for dinosaur movies. But yeah, poor Yoshi. Like that felt like a whole different movie. A lot of this felt like a whole different movie. You know what I mean? Like the, and then you mentioned the abruptness of the end. I I don't know if this is accurate or not, but it reminds me of Back to the Future. Oh yeah, totally. Well, you know, the music, 
Uh, oh, Alan Silvestri. Yes, he did Back to the Future movies, right? Mm -hmm. I, he did. Yeah. And uh, it's funny because he did Death Becomes Her, which definitely I could hear little hints of that. And I also feel like I'm like, this sounds either this theme sounds exactly like Honey, I Shrunk the Kids or I just remember this theme song so well and I forgot I remembered it. But I feel like they lifted. He was lifting things from like other movies of this time, it, it feels like. I or agree. everything I, just sounded like this, you know, he, he had he had something that worked and I think he just wrote it's with it, really but... good it's so fun like that's the kind of music that would be playing in a theme park if this movie was more successful I agree you know you another know? a sequence that I really enjoyed as a kid that I wish in my head I'm like this should be a this should be in Universal Studios or something mm. was the when they rescue like all the women and they go down yes. that ice thing one of my I'm favorite like... scenes Dave oh my god yeah tell me Oh, you know, I'm, I was just like, why is this not in a theme park? I and know. And we can just a wear like little Mario hats. Let's, 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 <laughs> yeah. just, let's rock out with this. It's yeah. really, really fun. And then you just have the Goombas behind you on their mattress. And it's like, oh, my God, go fast. Right? Oh, it seems like a no-brainer, like a, a cold tube. And they can just blast like cold air at you as you go. Oh, did, that'd be I gotta so ask, fun. What did you think? I mean, now on your rewatch and then back then what did you think of the whole mario luigi dynamic as you know like yeah at first i'm like when i first saw it i'm like they're brothers but one's puerto rican and the other italian what right. what's going on here but I then I, as an adult i'm like but wait is he his stepfather like what's going on here right because <laughs> as again as a kid i like kind of missed that and you don't even like my first watch i know i wasn't caring about race or ethnicity anything like that right but yeah so interesting and and you, I love that you have also played the games because I loved, you know, Mario Brothers and Mario Kart, all that stuff. But I don't know the game, you know, mythology too well. In the game, they are brothers. They're not they're like brothers. weird yeah. half brothers, step brothers, or foster, right? But no, the movie, brothers, yeah. Luigi says when Luigi and Daisy are, you know, kind of falling for each other early in the film, right? We know mm -hmm. Daisy has no parents. Her mom left her at the church. Oh my God, Dave, I wanted that that metal egg with the rock right. so badly. I would like create that out of like cardboard and carry it around. Oh, um, so we know her story. And then Luigi says at, at that Italian place, when she's talking about her parents, he says, yeah, I'm like you. I don't know who my parents are. Mario basically like found me and raised me. So I was like, oh, okay. That is something I definitely forgot, you know? Yeah, or just... I totally forgot. Right. And I, I, my assumption is that is the filmmaker saying, yeah, we know Bob Hoskins and John Leguizamo are two totally different races, right? Yeah. So they're going to just add this line in. And, and don't get me wrong. I feel like with a movie as fun and wild as this and with Mario, I don't know. And I want to hear your thoughts too, definitely. I don't know if like race is so important because it's, it's all this crazy bubblegum fantasy thing. And John Leguizamo is so charming, uh, especially back then, 30 years ago. Oh he God. is so much fun. Bob Hoskins is, is so in character. Like, so the two of them feel like really good fits to me, casting wise. Would you agree? 1000% agree. Right. Even, even though they didn't want to be there, I have some, <laughs> I don't know if you have this yeah, for later, I but saw I that do too. have some stuff for later. Um, I feel like despite the fact they didn't want to be there, their chemistry is pretty on brand. I really, right. I really like everything they do together. And like you said, I mean, Leguizamo in 93 was like chef's kiss. Oh he had this gosh. and he had Carlito's way that in 93 yes. as well. So yes. pretty much broke him out. I, I, you nailed it with the idea of like this movie is so out there for the era that race wasn't really, especially us as kids. That's not even what we right. were thinking at the time. Um, how much cocaine was taken on the set of this movie? Oh my god. I feel like every drug and every drink known to man was had to be on this set. Because yeah, real quick, let's go to what you were gonna say. I was reading, and you might have more info for sure, mm -hmm. um, that Bob Hoskins and John Leguizamo would drink not only before working, so I guess they would just wake up and start drinking, but they mm -hmm. would drink between takes. Did you yep. see that? I they did. They were so miserable. Apparently the director's were not great people kept throwing new scenes in and that's why the tone is a little all over the place right um yeah. i know there's like a director's cut that has 20 more minutes that is online i, I do want to watch it because i'm so curious because uh, a lot was cut but yeah i know it was not easy to make this i think dennis hopper said he was only supposed to be there five weeks which also is a lot for a movie five weeks Especially that is a lot of days this type of movie right like but he ended up being there for 17 weeks and he 
just was miserable. Yeah, so, actually, like I, the Dennis Hopper and the Bob Hoskins, but Hoskins didn't even know he was making a movie based on a video game until oh. his son asked him what he was working on. And Hoskins mentioned the title of the movie and his son immediately recognized it and showed Hoskins the game on his NES. Wow. So that's how little connection there was between directors. I know they really wanted Bob. Like they kept rewriting it. Lots of rewrites, a lot of different writers. Those three writers that are credited in the film, the finished film, Parker Bennett, Terry Runty, and Ed Solomon. There were like three times that many writers. And they apparently kept sending Bob each like rewrite each new draft until finally i guess he just said sure did, yeah fine did you it. see i had a i took down a list of like front runners for the roles before they landed on sir yeah tell us so for king for koopa like some of these would have been interesting but there's one i'm gonna leave for last because that would just be bad shit so armand asante who ended up <laughs> going he ended up playing Gotti in the hbo 96 movie Ooh, yep kevin costner it feels like this feels so, like some of these names feel like we sent it to his agent and we're going to call that we offered him the, right. the part. Like, Come no, on now. No I way. cannot imagine Kevin Costner anywhere near this movie, right? Uh, William Defoe, that one mm. feels like he'd take a look, at least yeah. take a look. Oh, yeah. Um, he would be a pretty sick Koopa or something. Yeah. Uh -huh. I agree. Uh, Michael Douglas? No, <laughs> absolutely <laughs> not. Um, Jeremy Irons. Uh, eh. Come on. Tommy Lee Jones. I mean, he was a great Two-Face. I do like him he as Two-Face. But he uh, would not no go way. this. Arnold Schwarzenegger. I did see Arnold in the mix, yeah. Christopher Walken. <laughs> and then the last two are Michael Keaton. Okay. And I figured, like, that was probably a no-shotter because he had Batman. just done Batman. Right. I think that was over. And then, uh, what I would have loved, because I've mentioned this man before, was Al Pacino. <laughs> Can I you... cannot imagine Al Pacino anywhere oh, near this movie. Just because, like, it's by 93, it's not Pacino in The Godfather. It's Pacino right. in Heat. So, yeah. like, we get, like, this Pacino is like, you gotta get those plumbers! <laughs> I, yeah. I, that I, was good. Oh, my God, I, yes. Like, that Pacino in here, I kind of would have been like, oh, I'm curious to see how that works. I mean, it, it would work. It would totally work. But I just feel like, oh, my God, can you imagine? This movie would be probably even more embarrassing if Pacino was in it. I Do you know what so. I mean? Yeah. But that was a great Pacino impression. You're right. Oh, this was definitely his shouting era. This was his <sighs> heat. His devil's advocate was a few years after this. Like, just nonstop. No, screaming. I, 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 Pacino is my favorite actor of all time, and I love Heat. I love everything. He oh, does I love Heat. Even this, oh, I love it's, Heat. It's in my top like twelve favorite movies of all time. If if you talk about Heat or if I talk about Heat, I feel like I'll be our please next. bring me yes. on for that. Uh -huh. I, I'm uh -huh. obsessed with Heat. I think it's a perfect movie. Um, but him and you mentioned Devil's Advocate. Pacino and Devil's Advocate has become one of the best unintentionally hilarious performances like I've ever seen. Yeah. Him, when he's like to Keanu, he's like, I'm a fan of man! <laughs> it's, it's so hilarious. Um, but yes, you're right. Pacino would have, I don't know what the hell he would have done here. Oh my um, God. Because Dennis Hopper chooses the scenery. I mean, he is, it. he is, you know, shouting and he is, I mean, he he's committed, but Pacino would really just just explode and this movie i re i realized by the end of it i'm like wow this is the movie of like 1000 crashes there's yeah. so many car crashes there's people crashing into each other there's people crashing into glass i mean it's funny because the budget was only around 48 million but back then 30 years ago that was that was a nice chunk of money right yeah. but to our mind now it's like oh that's not all that much it's substantial but for all this stuff but man, they were going for every explosion and crash that they could. So imagine all that and then Pacino shouting over it. Wow, that that would be amazing. And it lost money, but it didn't lose as much. I went doing like box office research. Yeah. research it lost money, yeah. but it didn't lose as much money as I expected. Because you mentioned yeah. the budget was about 40 to 48, 48 mil, yeah. And it grossed 38.9. So right. yeah, of course it lost money, but it wasn't as bad as yeah. money was that I expected. Yeah, um, it wasn't a massive flop, but I'm sure they spent a pretty penny on marketing, you know, something like this. You know, it's funny. I didn't realize, Dave, and maybe you saw this too. This was the first movie based on a video game. Yes, it was. 
pretty amazing. I mean, that's also why, listen, it's a mess, but I do love it. And rewatching it today, I still love it. I love how wacky it is. I love the henchmen, Iggy and Spike. And do how you... funny to see Iggy on Succession. You watched Thank Succession, you. yeah? I was about to. The fact that, uh, shout out to, he he wanted to be on today, Jack. Uh, he's oh, yeah. Uh-huh. So he was on last He's like, you yeah. better mention Fisher yep. Stevens. In this Fisher movie. Stevens. And I'm like, I can't believe that's the same guy. <laughs> I love Fisher Stevens. And what's the other actor's name who plays Spike? Let me I don't see. I not remember. He, they are so good. And I remembered them so well. Like, as a kid, I loved those guys. Those are the roles that I would have wanted to have played. Let me see real quick. We have Fisher Stevens and Richard Edson. Okay, they were great. I mean, they're, let's talk about the cast. I know everybody, yes. we, we rewound already. Usually I say, let's rewind to 1993. We are deep in yeah, May right. <laughs> 28th, 1993, when this movie came out. So here were the stars. Obviously, Bob Hoskins, John Leguizamo, Dennis Hopper. We've talked about them. Samantha Mathis, who I had a bit of a little... She was she was hot in this moment. She did this. The next year was Little Women. She was in that movie with Sandra Bullock, I think. I can't remember what it is I now. I don't remember, but, but she was also in Broken Arrow with John Travolta. She was in Broken Arrow a couple years yeah. later. That was big. Like, yeah, and then she was in American Psycho. She really kind of faded. But Wait, she, she was in American Psycho? She was in American Psycho in a smaller role. She's the one that's like always on pills. She's she's cheating oh, you're with right. Christian Bale. Yeah. 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 She's she's definitely a more supporting character. Um but yeah, that, after that, she kind of faded. But so those are our leads. But yeah, Fisher Stevens, Richard Edson as Iggy and Spike, such a fun duo. We have Fiona Shaw, who many people know her now um, in that show Killing Eve. But Fiona Shaw as Lena, wow, what a role. I remember I was very like intrigued by her. She's in the, the crazy red hair and like the, the skin tight, slinky outfits. And she's very snake-like, right? Um, yes. She was great in this. And then also we have... Um, Francesca P. Roberts, who I have to shout out, she plays Bertha, and I remembered Bertha Bertha. so well. I love Bertha, the red spiky outfit. I don't know if this is accurate. Do you know who she's supposed to be in the game? No. Do you? I don't know how accurate this is. This is just... I I feel like... This was the very in- loosely based on the game. Oh, personally. there. The inter- right? And you, and you know, Mark, the internet never lies. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sure what I'm about to tell you is 100% true. Apparently, she's supposed to be the fish, the red and white fish. Oh, from- okay. I, I don't believe that, but I wow. was like, let me throw it out there because I read it. I, I, I love her. I love like that little sequence with her and Mario oh. with, their, with their dancing. It's really the, Oh fun. my God, it's so funny. I was going to say, Dave, that is one of my favorite scenes. That and the the sliding on the mattress. But yeah, the way they're dancing and he's he's trying to bite the, the meteorite and he's trying to, you know, get it. So funny. I love it. And then I love how she randomly, instead of being angry at him for stealing it, she's like, okay, I respect your theft game and now i'm gonna kiss you and now i'm gonna help you i'm like okay doesn't really make sense but thanks bertha right yeah for sure they're brothers they're plumbers oh no Luigi. they're on the trail Luigi. of a kidnapped princess and a mystical meteorite it's incredible that gives anyone who possesses it <laughs> the power to rule the universe. Get me the rock! Come and get it, lizard breath! Thanks so much for watching. Next week will be part two of this discussion. And in the meantime, please follow Release Date Rewind on Instagram. I'm-